Hello everyone, welcome into another Tactics video here on the channel. My name, as always, is Ash or Brom18, whichever you prefer. Today we're continuing our Tactics series, a series where I show you how to replicate real systems in-game. Here by popular demand, for some reason, we have Gareth Southgate's England Tactics. We're going to be looking at the 4-3-3. Of course, he's tinkered with a, a kind of a 5-4-1 over the years, but, you know, particularly in the group stage of the World Cup, you know, We've seen the 4-3-3 the three, three at the moment. So we're going to go through that today, uh, show you the kind of position changes. There are a couple of them. Um, we'll also talk about the tactics, go through why they, what they do and why they do it, and also the player instructions as well. I'll also show you a little tweak to the system when someone like Henderson comes in uh, into that kind of midfield instead of maybe like someone like Bellingham or Mount as well. So got a couple of things to go through here. Before we do get into that, I do quickly want to tell you guys, if you want to see how this tactic ranks amongst the other tactics, get strengths, weaknesses, suitable teams to play as, check out my FIFA 23 tactics package on the Patreon. Not only do you get access to that, you can also get access to a range of fantastic perks such as behind the scenes videos early access to videos uh, discord server access exclusive tactics videos and a whole lot more great way to support the channel if you can afford it and also check out my gaming podcast as well the ash bros podcast really excited loving doing it so far me and my pal ash covering all things video games so if that's your thing go and check it out with that being said let's get into this one so first things first with the formation we've got a general 4-3-3 holding as you can see there is a position change or two what we want to do is we want to move Mason Mount here up to that center attacking midfield role. That's going to get a little bit further forward into those more advanced pockets of space. Uh, and in addition to that, we also want to adjust Bellingham, make sure he's a right central midfielder. We'll talk about this more in the player instructions, but we want him drifting out wide occasionally, making runs into the channels to help support the wide men. That's something that I have noticed him doing, uh, something he's really done throughout his entire career as well. Uh, so we have that. Other than that, you don't need to change the fullbacks, you don't need to change the wingers, and, and so on and so forth. So with that being said, let's get into the tactics. Right then, first things first, defensive style. We've got pressure on heavy touch. We'll get into this more very, very shortly, but naturally they're not going gung-ho with regards to their press. They're not looking uh, to commit too many and leave too much space in behind. It's a very kind of calculated, I guess. Very kind of reserved, withdrawn type of press. Um, and so that's what you're looking to do. With the width, it's on 30, not too compact. You'll notice some gap here and there forming between the vertical lines of the team uh, which is why i've ended up settling 430 and then with depth we have it on 40 still a mid block but quite a low one a very low one um before it does go to 30 and below and, and then you've got a real low block uh, they did actually have a low block against usa for the majority of that game uh, but for the other games it was more of a mid block so we settled on 40 in the end again very very well quite passive um, you know, allowing the opposition to, to have the ball if if they do decide to uh, to do that. Likes of Wales and Iran were happy to sacrifice possession, but if if the opposition do want to do that, then they they will allow that. Um, so yeah, very very deep. You know, again, we've got a mid block, and you will notice that in game as well. Build up play is slow build up. They do emphasise trying to play out from the back. They do want to retain possession if they can, um, and so you'll notice on goalkeeper restarts you'll. You'll see the likes of the centre-back Stones, Maguire, dropping off into the 18-yard box. And then chance creation is possession as well. I'm not going to talk about this too much. It's kind of said to death on social media, isn't it? How it's it's quite lethargic, quite passive. The, you know, the horseshoe. I saw someone mention on The Athletic, it's like a horseshoe of passing as it goes from the left-back of Luke Shaw all the way around the defence back up to the right-back. Um, so it is a little bit like that, and we know kind of what they're like. Uh, the width is on 80. You'll actually notice they're very wide. It's stretched out. There's a lot of space in between each vertical line. A lot of players, really, they do try and get out to the touchlines and stretch the play. Um, and that's partly why I think it's, it's so hard for them to kind of construct, um, you know, kind of patterns of play together. But you will notice they do try and stretch out the team and create a lot of a lot of those gaps. So we have this on 80, um, and it will be a fairly wide system. Players in the box is on six, giving you three players in the box. Again, they don't like to commit too many men. It's usually the front three getting into the box. Sometimes you might see Bellingham, who has, who has started to do that, getting in there as well. But that's usually when one of the attackers is crossing the ball. Um, so do bear that in mind as well. Finally, with corners and free kicks, we have gone for for on both obviously we know what they're like set pieces is definitely one of their their strong points that is where they they are 
um, you know, quite quite dangerous. I should also just say, obviously, we've mixed around with the, the lineup here. We've obviously seen the likes of Saka, Sterling, Rashford, Foden on either wings. The roles will stay the same for all the front three, regardless of who is, is playing where. So whether it's Saka, Rashford, Foden, Sterling, um, you know, the roles will stay pretty similar. The only one it changes for um, is Jack Grealish, and we'll talk about that very, very soon. So, let's talk about the player instructions then. Starting off with Pickford in goal, we've got him on sweeper keeper and comes for crosses. Um, despite the fact that obviously they're playing a, a lower block, it's more of a personal thing for him. We know he likes to, to take risks to come out if he needs to. He's, he's quick off the mark, um, and so, you know, he can try and sweep a penny loose balls. Again, comes for crosses. He will try and take the uh, or seize the kind of any moves, any crosses, and try and relieve pressure off his defence. Uh, with the two centre backs, no changes there, uh, so you can leave them as they were. And then with the full backs, starting off with Luke Shaw, two different instructions here. We've got Luke Shaw join the attack and overlap. This one's very obvious, self explanatory, really. I don't need to go too much into that. But what I do need to go into is the right back here, Kyle Walker. Very, very unique set of circumstances here. We've actually got balanced attacking runs and balanced or mixed run type. Never ever done that before on any tactics video as far as I know. I can't remember ever doing that. Um, but this is kind of to signify his role within this England setup. He doesn't actually fully replicate that Man City role he has where he inverts, he'll join the central midfielders. You'll often see Walker sometimes overlapping, getting forward. Done it on many occasions. He did it in the Wales game, for example. Um, and it was really hard to kind of pinpoint this. So we actually settled on mixed and balanced for both of those instructions. You, you're trying to get the best of both worlds. He won't always join the attack, but he does sometimes. He does. Um, he's given more license to kind of get forward and support the attack and, and join the whip as well. So do bear that one in mind. With Declan Rice at defensive midfield, we've got him on cut passing lanes for his defensive behaviour. And his attacking support is on stay back while attacking. His defensive position is cover centre. We don't want him getting dragged out wide too much. That's the job of the, the midfielders in front of him. And then the positioning freedom is on stick to position. Uh, I actually found he wasn't really the type of player, um, at least in this England setup, to dot around into too many pockets of space. He's a, a little bit more kind of restricted in that sense. So I kept this on uh, stick to position in the end. Are we Bellingham then? We've got his attacking support on balanced. He isn't given license to constantly make runs in beyond the attackers and the striker of Kane, etc. Um, but what's more of a personal preference to him we've seen him getting into the box often for those crossing situations so in that regard sport on crosses get into the box or the cross but attacking support is only on balanced he doesn't play that out and out um kind of engine midfielder role because i don't think he's given the license to i think it, it, if he was given the license, he would play it and very effectively as well. Uh, positioning freedom is drift wide. We mentioned this earlier while we got him on right central midfield. You'll often notice him running into the channels more, showing for the ball. They like to kind of build up in those wide areas. Um, and this is just to support that. Um, so we've got his position freedom on drift wide and his defensive position is also on cover wing as he'll be the one covering in those situations should Kyle Walker uh, obviously overlap. With Mason Mount then, we've got him on comeback on defence to make sure he's tracking back. Remember, we did move him up to camp. And then support across his stay on the edge of the box of the cross. You won't notice him getting into the box as much when someone like Bellingham is, of course, supporting those crossing situations and adding another body in the 18-yard the box. Mount will then restrict himself and stay on the edge of the box. Again, they don't like to many men committing and, and getting forward and then his positioning freedom is stick to position right then let's talk about the two wingers because they've both got the same instructions here and we'll also mention how it changes just a little bit with with Grealish on the pitch um, we've got his defense support on comeback on defense again like I say the same for both of them make sure that they are tracking back and then their chance creation is cut inside they are going to angle their runs of course we've seen the likes of Rashford and Saka already doing it Sterling Foden have all scored all of these guys have scored from doing the same thing kind of getting into the box angling their runs cutting inside and running in behind making sure that they are how this team has a level of of penetration with regards to uh, getting in behind the, the opposition back line. Uh, support on crosses is also getting to the box for the cross. Uh, finally, with Kane up front before we get into the tactical tweaks, 
Um, we have his attacking runs on false nine. We know what he's up, particularly for England. He really does drop off. A lot of the, the attacking play goes through him, of course. Um, as a recording, he's currently leading the competition in assists. So, you know, we know what that's like. His support runs is balanced. He won't always stay central. He'll sometimes come out to the wide areas. Remember, he assisted Foden's goal from doing just that. So he can occasionally... Um, you know, come out into those wide areas and just support the play. He does it in the gameplay as well that you will notice. And in defensive support, he's also basic defensive support. He does sometimes track back. Again, they do like to often get 11 men behind the ball. Um, and so sometimes he's kind of supporting in those areas as well. So let's talk about the attacking tweaks. And first things first, how does it change a little bit with Grealish on the pitch? Well, Grealish actually, and I think this is more to do with um, his coaching at a club level rather than at international level. I don't think they really um, like him doing this the most. But what he does, you'll notice, is he actually gets onto the touchline and his support runs, rather than getting him behind, are actually on balance. He shows for the ball a little bit more. He sticks out onto the, to the touchline and tries to get himself into space. Again, that's something that's very much more reminiscent of Man City. So in my opinion, I think this is something that, that's more personal to him um, and he hasn't quite um, adapted to the to the different system of, of Southgate's England, for example. Um, but other than that, defensive support, support and crosses, they are both the same. So you want to stay wide and balance support. Uh, with the central midfielders, let's say, for example, Bellingham uh, goes up to attacking midfield and then someone like Henderson comes on. In this case, what you want to do is you actually want to change both of them in the midfield to defensive midfield. So we're actually going to just quickly change it to the 4-2-3-1 uh, system just so we can uh, get it better. Remember, you want these guys still on the wing. Just want to change it so that the uh, central midfielders, Henderson and Rice, are now both defensive midfielders. So with Henderson, in this case, uh, he's on cut passing lanes for his defensive behaviour. His attacking support is stay back while attacking. Uh, his defensive position this time is cover wing and his positioning freedom uh, is deep lying playmaker. You'll notice him showing for the ball more, dropping into more pockets compared to someone like Rice. Um, and so as a result, we do have that. So with that being said, we're just about ready to round it off. If you've got any more questions about the system, please do let me know. Maybe there will be tweaks. There maybe it might be a five back that comes as a recording this. We've only just done the group stages. Um, so, you know, it may change. And if they do a five back and people want to see it, then I would be happy to, to cover that as well. And like I say, any questions about the tattoo, please do let me know. Um, any suggestions? You guys, we are covering most of the international teams, so you don't need to keep saying, can we do Argentina, Germany? We will get round to them, I can assure you of that. Uh, make sure, as always, check out my Patreon. Lots of fantastic perks and rewards on there. Great way to support the channel. And also my gaming podcast, the Ash Bros Gaming Podcast. All the links to your favourite Spotify uh podcasting app spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, all the video versions are all in the description down below we're now going to go into some gameplay so you can see the tactic firsthand and with that being said until next time i will see you soon thank you so much for watching